Multiply 3.0 Tutorial 2 Common Q Attributes. All of the different types of cues, whether it be an audio cue or a MIDI cue or an OSC cues, have some common attributes to them, and you'll need to understand that as you're setting up a cue. So I'm going to double click on Oh My God up here, and it'll open up, and then you can see under Common Attributes, uh, cue number, which you could put in, description you can type in a description if you don't it usually picks up the information from the media file for example this is track one and the title of the track is oh my god part one uh, script reference which is very very helpful you can type that in for rehearsal so you can know where in the script does this particular audio cue occur now as far as cue advance this means what happens when you actually fire a cue and when you have a cue selected it's going to have this green arrow up here, which means it's ready to fire. And by the way, I would always have these two boxes up here selected. They basically keep the active queue up and in the queue list. And also by selecting the grid selection up here, it allows me to click anywhere and have that queue selected to be fired. Okay. Other than that, I would have to go through another menu item to bring up the queue to fire it. So. Let's take a look at what the command is. We're using start advance here, which means the queue will fire and do what it needs to do, and it will advance to the next queue, which means if I fire it, and you may be able to hear the music playing, and you can see that's progressing. My next queue is now on deck and ready to be played. So that's how the software works. The this cue is currently playing, and you can see the green progressing through there, and the next cue that's ready to fire has the green arrow on it. Now let's go back and look at our other choices here. So cue advance, start advance would start the cue, uh, and then advance, have the next cue on deck ready to play. Start play will actually start this cue, and then go to the next cue and play that cue also. So how that results, if your next cue is also set to start advance, it's basically going to fire those two cues simultaneously. So if you wanted to layer some audio, that's the way that you could do that. I will do a separate tutorial here about layering audio cues, though. Uh, fade in advance, which means the audio would fade in. It would also advance to the next cue. Fade in and play means fade in the cue and also play the next cue. Fade out and then advance. So in this case, it would advance precisely when the cue is fading out. If you have a fade out set, fade out and play. As it reaches that fade out point, it would jump to the next cue and start playing that. And advance, which means that it would wait until the cue is actually done and then jump down to the next cue. And end play, it would wait till the cue is actually finished and then go to the next cue and actually play it. So those are all the uh, choices that you have here. And using those choices then, you'll be able to layer audio cues or have a lighting cue and an audio cue both fire at the same time. Uh, for example, using start play, you could have the audio cue fire and also play the next cue, which might be a MIDI cue, which fires a MIDI command to your light board. So that's the way you would simultaneously fire those two cues together. So. Target is usually by default set to next queue. If you need to do something specific, you can actually choose what the queue will be from the drop down menu. So if you need it to jump to a different queue, you can actually do that. And you could jump forward to a queue and then you could jump backwards to a queue. So that's a possibility there too. Uh, pre wait, once you fired the queue, do you want it to wait before the queue actually fires? You may need this to synchronize your audio and your lighting cues. Say your MIDI file you created is slightly off and you need to have the audio just wait for a couple milliseconds before it goes so that the synchronization is right there. Or you could do this to the MIDI cue too. This is the amount of time it's going to wait before the cue actually does what it needs to do, whether it's playing back MIDI or setting an OSC command or playing audio. Uh, post wait, this is how much it's going to wait at the end before it does something. So. Um, also up here, which is part of the common, but it's not part of the common uh, tab, is your notes. This is common to all of the cues where you can type in notes and they're going to appear over here. Your notes window will show you 
the queue that just was fired, the queue that you're currently on, and then the next queue. So it's the previous, current, and next queue to come up. So you get information from all those, and that'll be in the notes queue window over here. And then the advanced tab over here, which is also common amongst all the queues, is you can actually set a hotkey on your keyboard that would actually fire that particular queue, even though you're not in that particular order. And you can determine whether it's going to be a press or release. So common and your notes and in your advanced, you will find these tabs on all of your different types of queue, whether they be audio or MIDI or OSC commands.